Rebuilding a Stuart 5A steam engine. This is part 5, and it covers the cylinder, the valve chest and the slide valve, plus making some new gaskets. At the moment I'm removing the steam chest cover, there are three studs actually missing, which makes it a bit easier really. And inside the steam chest you can see the valve, and once again, everything is really well made on this engine. I'm quite looking forward to the reassembly and making it go. The steam chest is quite a tight fit on these studs, so I think what I'm going to do is actually drill out the steam chest and enlarge the holes. My trusty craft knife makes short work of the seal and I can separate the components, but the steam chest, in my opinion, is too tight on these studs, and also the studs are slack in the cylinder, which means that if I tighten the studs up, this steam chest is not going to go on, it's not going to go over the studs because everything will be just too tight. When working on heat engines, you have to bear in mind that the whole thing's going to get quite hot, and metal expands, and different metals expand at a different rate, so it's much better to put a little bit of tolerance in to allow for expansion and contraction. You will notice that the gland assembly which screws into the steam chest is just finger tight, this is no good, and it will have to be fixed properly. In this close-up view of the slide valve, you can see that the slide valve is quite loose on the valve spindle, and it's meant to be like that. Steam engines rely on the pressure of the steam to hold the slide valve against the port face. If the slide valve is rigid, it can be held off the port face, and then the engine will not go at all. I noticed when I was removing the steam chest from the cylinder that there was a gasket between the two components. This gasket was very weak though, and it fell apart in my hands. So it's time to make some new gaskets, and this is how I normally make them. Generally, I get my gasket material from a company who actually manufacture gaskets, and the guy who owns the company is a friend of mine, so that's a bonus. But you can buy suitable gasket material for steam engines from Blackgates Engineering, where I get most of my items from. Their web address is on screen at the moment. I generally give Blackgates Engineering a plug on my videos, because I've known them for a long time, and I always buy my materials from there. It's very, very convenient. And in my opinion, they offer a service that's second to none for model engineers. Back now to the gasket making. Once I've drawn around the cover, using a pencil or a biro, I then drill out the holes in the gasket material. And I do of course use the existing holes in the steam chest cover as a guide for the drill. It is of course very important not to move the steam chest cover, which you're using as a pattern for the holes. If you look closely at the video, you will see that I accidentally moved the cover as I was drilling the holes. So the holes are not in the right place. Not to worry, I just discarded that gasket and made another. And once I'd made the second gasket, I marked out the centre, which I need to cut out. And I'm making two gaskets, one for between the steam chest and the cylinder, and one between the steam chest cover and the steam chest itself. So what I did was, I drilled through two at once, just to save a bit of time. You don't really need to cut out the centre of both of these gaskets, only the one that goes between the steam chest cover and the cylinder. And when cutting the centre out of the gasket, it's a very good idea to make this centre hole a little bit larger, just so there's no chance of it ever fouling the slide valve. And for the gasket that goes between the steam chest cover and the steam chest, you don't really need to cut out the centre, but it's good policy to do so. I've often seen steam chest cover gaskets deteriorate with time. If you don't cut out the centre part, it can become soggy and then break up, because the oil and steam and heat will degrade a gasket if it's not supported. And if this then gets into the working part of the engine, it can cause problems. Not major problems, but it's best to avoid this in the first place, so take the extra time and cut out the centre of the gasket. On screen at the moment is something that you should not do. What I'm doing is being really anal with my pair of scissors and getting the gasket perfectly shaped, and this is totally unnecessary. When you fit it to the engine, you just need to run round the edge with a very sharp knife and trim off the gasket. Time now to have a look at the port face on the cylinder. One thing I did notice, and it isn't very clear on this piece of video unfortunately, is that the port face is not very good really, it's a bit rough in places. It's not worn or anything, it's just that there are some very deep scratches in a part of the port face that I'd rather there weren't deep scratches in. And then I'm using some oil, 
on some wet or dry sandpaper and then for quite a long time I rub the cylinder up and down on this sandpaper and it's really difficult to show this on video because when I use the cylinder with the other hand like this I can't control it because I'm right handed. So this is a short part of the video that really took a lot longer. I could of course mount this in the milling machine and use a face cutter to re-skin the port face but it wasn't that bad but the scratches were very deep but now there are no longer any deep scratches. Moving over now to the steam chest the slide valve also needs cutting back a little bit there's some scratches on that but not as bad as the ones on the port face so I'll do this first same principle and this time I can use my left hand because it's a much smaller component and once again I rub this component for quite a long time on the wet or dry sandpaper which has got oil on it and after I finish the valve and that's looking good I do the same to the steam chest I'm just cleaning up the mating faces I know the gaskets are going to be in place it's a really good idea to have good mating faces on components before fitting the gaskets that way it will seal after giving the steam chest a thorough clean to get rid of any grit that may have been present, the gunmetal gland fitting and the valve guide are then fitted in place using some Loctite 542. Loctite 542 is a thread sealant, but this is Loctite 638, which is not a thread sealant, it is a bearing retainer, and I'm using this to fit the valve spindle to the valve fork, because it was a little bit on the loose side. If ever I need to remove this valve fork from the valve spindle, which of course is unlikely but you never know, what I would have to do is heat it with a blow lamp to make the adhesive give way. Once the gland nut fixing and the nut that supports the back end of the valve spindle are fitted to the valve chest using some Loctite 542, I'm pretty certain they're not going to leak so then I can reassemble the whole thing. So I'm putting the valve spindle in place, followed by a couple of nuts, followed by the valve, followed by the other two nuts. But I'm not tightening these nuts just yet because I need to set the valve. That will be later. I mentioned at the beginning of this episode that there are some studs missing, three to be exact. So I'll have to make those. Quite easy to do. But for the moment, I'm not going to digress and make those. I'm going to fit the studs that I already have. The bottom left one is longer and that holds the bracket that supports the reversing gear. One thing I overlooked is the fact that the studs are quarter of an inch in diameter as they go into the cylinder and only three sixteenths of an inch in diameter as they come through the steam chest cover. So all I had to do was enlarge the holes in one of the gaskets and that's the one that goes on the cylinder and the other gasket is just fine as it is. As previously mentioned I had to enlarge the holes in the steam chest when I tightened up all these studs, there was no possible way would that steam chest go on. It went on if the studs were left slack, but that's no good at all. With the steam chest in position, I can now trim the gasket. And that's why when I was making the gasket, I did mention not to bother about trimming the gasket to the final size. This is the way to do it, and it looks incredibly neat. So that's the cylinder taken care of. The cylinder bore by the way is really good and it's a far cry from the bore on the last engine I worked on. So I just need to make these three studs which I'll make from a piece of stainless steel then there's not going to be a rust problem and then the engine can really start going back together. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.